Questions. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about reflection on the coordinate plane. So reflection on the coordinate plane. Now at the beginning of the year we talked about how to graph points on the coordinate plane. And this is going to be a continuation of that. Okay, this is going to follow the workbook page 395 to 402. And this also can be found on page 403 to 410. Okay, so let's talk about what the word reflection means. All right, so when you think of the word reflection, you should be thinking mirror image. Mirror image. Right? And so um, the other thing that I would like for you to do is I would like for you to find yourself a piece of graph paper. As we do this, it's important that you do this. Um, find a piece of graph paper, and what I want you to do is I want you to cut out like a small square. So if you have to pause the video, um, please do so. But um, what I would like for you to do is get a piece of graph paper, and what we're going to do is we're going to use that in order to graph some points and show um, reflection on the coordinate plane. And then once you get your graph paper, what I want you to do is, and I'll give you time to do this, I want you to create your X and your Y. So here's your Y, here's your X. And of course you know that's zero, zero. And I want you to go out to, let's say, go out to six both positive and negative, and use the graph, the little lines here when you're graphing. So if you could go find some graph paper, go up to positive and negative six. And I'll pause the video. You pause the video so you guys get that um, all taken care of with all of your numbers in it, and then we'll continue on with the lesson. Okay, so at this point you should have created your coordinate plane grid because we're going to need this for later on. All right, so when I'm talking about reflection on the coordinate plane, I'm talking about the mirror image. All right, so I want you to think about it. So here's our graph paper, right? So if I am, here's the x-axis. When I am finding the mirror image over the x-axis, I want you to see what I'm doing. I'm Think of it as I'm folding it over this x-axis. So if I had a point here and I fold it over, it's going to end up over here. Now the same thing is going to be true if I'm reflecting over the y-axis. So here's the y-axis. When I'm reflecting over the y-axis, so here's y. If I had a point out here, I'm folding it this way right? I'm folding it this way. So if I had a point over here, when I fold it, it goes over here. And that's what we're going to be talking about, is how do I figure out what those points are? All right, there are two methods, okay? Let's talk about first method. Method one. Method one's the easy one. All right, method one, what you're going to do is you're going to count the number of spaces. Count the number of spaces. to the line of reflection. The line of reflection, excuse me, the line of reflection is your fold line. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna move that same number of space on the other side. Move the same number of spaces on the other side. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean. So let's say I had my point over here and it was the distance here was two and I wanted to fold it over the x-axis. Well, when I fold it and I count two spaces, I have to count two spaces this way and that's where my point is going to be. So notice the distance from that line of reflection is the same. The same thing is true here. Let's say the distance from here to here is three. Well, I have to make sure the distance from this side to this line of reflection is also three. The distance has to be the same. Distance has to be the same. Okay, 
So we're going to do some points, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. All right, and we're going to start with the point J. J is going to be the point 3 comma 5. Okay, so 3 comma 5. So let's do 3 comma 5. Here is 3, here is 5, this is the point J. All right, now when I reflect that point, over the x-axis. Remember, I'm folding this way, right? So I can see even from my graph paper, it's going to be down here somewhere, isn't it? All right, so if I count the distance from j to the x-line, the x-axis, one, two, three, four, five. It's five spaces, so five blocks. Think of blocks. One, two, three, four, five. Here's my new number. Now, this reflection point I'm going to call J prime. That's what we do when we are, we're um, reflecting points on the x-axis, or on any axis, actually. Um, so this is going to become so our new one if we reflect over the x-axis. This new point becomes, let's look, it's 3, negative 5. All right, so here it's, this is going to lead us to um, our second method. So when we reflected J, which was 3, 5, over the x-axis, I want you to compare the x parts and the y parts. What do you notice? Well, hopefully you're noticing when you reflect over the x-axis, the x stayed the same. And look at the y part. The y part became its opposite. 5 became negative 5. The 3 stayed the same. So if you could remember that, then that's another method that you can use. So to reflect over the x-axis, Like in our case where I had j, which was 3 comma 5, and j prime, which was 3 negative 5, the x part stays the same, and the y part becomes the opposite. Notice the line that you're reflecting over stays the same. All right, so I'm going to do one where you reflect over the y-axis, okay? So to reflect over the y-axis... All right, so I'm going to take that same point, J, which was 3, 5, and I'm going to reflect it over the y-axis and see what happens. Now, this time I'm going to call it J double prime. Okay, so I'm staying with 3, so I'm going to go back to my graph paper, okay? So I'm staying with 3, 5. Now, this time I want to reflect this way over the y-axis. See where my fold line is? All right, so method one would be just to count the blocks to the line of reflection. One, two, three. So I count the blocks here. One, two, three. This is where that new point should be. This would be J double prime. This is the point negative three, positive five. This was the point three, five. This was the point three, negative five. So I want you to see, this is the point. Make sure you have that written. We're going to tape this into our notes afterwards. So when we reflected 3, 5 over the Y line, and I counted the same number of spaces, 3, I ended up with negative 3, 5. All right, now I want you to compare them. All right, now look at the X part. Well, let me write it this way because maybe you could see it better. J double prime became negative 3 and the 5, the five stayed the same. So I want you to see when we look at, when we reflect over the Y, the X part becomes the opposite and the Y part remain the same versus this one the X stayed the same, and the Y became the opposite. When you reflect over Y, the Y part stayed the same. Okay, that's a good rule for you to, do, to use. Either method will work. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit more practice with this. What I want you to do is take a piece of tape, and you can tape this to the back of your notes. 
Okay, I'll pause the video. And then what I would like for you to do is I would like to go to your workbook, and I'll tell you what page, but take that for right now. So what I would like for you to do is go to page 405. 405. I'm going to move this over. Here we go. Here we go, 405. And what we're going to do is going to work through this example. We'll work through several examples together. Okay. So here we go. It says, name the ordered pair that's a reflection of negative 3, positive 2 across the x-axis. All right, so x is here, right? If you need to darken it, do that. So first, let's graph. Uh, I noticed that they're missing some numbers here, so I'm going to fill in the numbers. I always do that. I like to make sure my numbers are in. All right, so negative, x is negative 3, so I'm going to go left to negative 3, up to 2. So there's my point, right? They want us to reflect it over x, so it's going this way. So method one, method one would be that you count to number of spaces to the line of reflection. So look, one, two blocks, one, two. This is my new point. So if I read it, it's negative three, negative two. And that's my answer, negative three, negative two. Now the other way that you could have done it is just realize when you're reflecting over x, the x part stays the same. The y part becomes the opposite. So the 2 became a negative 2. Okay, let's do a little more practice with that. That way we'll get better at it. All right, let's look at the next example that they give us. All right, they give us got it problems. All right, so what they want us to do, um, I want you to reflect C over the x-axis, and I want you to reflect D over the y-axis. I'm changing the directions, okay? And then for this one, we're going to reflect both, both over the x and then we're gonna then we're gonna reflect over the y-axis because I want you to see what happens with that too. All right, so pause the video and then we'll go through the problems. All right, so at this point you should have done the problems, and this is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna first graph one negative four. So one down to negative four. That's the first point, right? This was C. I'm going to fill in the numbers here. They didn't fill in the numbers. They probably couldn't fit them. All right, I said reflect this over the x-axis. All right, so one method. Without graphing, the x part stays the same. The y part becomes the opposite. It should be 1, 4. So yeah, I'm going to check. So 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces to the line. It should be 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces to the line. Is this the point 1, 4? Yep. All right, now let's do the next one. This one I want you to reflect over y. So when you reflect over y, so this was negative two, I'm gonna do it in a different color. Uh, let's do green. Um, negative two, five. So x is negative two, up to five would be up here. Here's five. All right, they want us to reflect it over the y line, so we're going this way. So look, this is one, two spaces to the y line, so one, two to this line would be right here. So that looks like it's the point 2, 5. See, you're counting to that line. Now, the other way you could have done it is you could have realized that the x part should have been the opposite. The y part stays the same. Is that what we did? Sure is. All right, so let me get rid of all of this because this gets a little bit messy. All right. So the last one, what I wanted you to do is I wanted you to graph over both the x, 
then the y. So I wanted you to graph over x, then I wanted you to reflect over y. All right, so let's do it. So this is negative three, negative one. So that's right here. All right, so if I reflect it over x, if I count the line here, here's one. This was one space, this is one space. Now I need to reflect it over y. This is one, two, three spaces, right? One, two, three spaces. My last point that I end up with is three comma one. Now I want you to notice what happened to the x. This was our original point. Now this I reflected over x, then I reflected over y. So when you reflect over x, then over y, both of these, the x part becomes the opposite and the y part becomes the opposite. They both become the opposite. Getting the hang of it? Okay.